Hi everyone and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John DiTulio. And I'm Kristen Clock. While the RIT men's hockey team struggled to produce wins out of conference this season, the Tigers had no trouble proving they are still the team to beat in the Atlantic Hockey Association. RIT taking care of business, completing a weekend sweep of Canisius while clinching its fourth AHA regular season title in the last five seasons. The Tigers now have gone unbeaten in their last 11 games, which is the longest active streak in Division I hockey. It's certainly a huge accomplishment considering the biggest question mark coming into this season following the Tigers' remarkable run to the Frozen Four was who would replace goaltender Jared DeMichael. Well, head coach Wayne Wilson chose to juggle his options in the net earlier this season, but has since made number one his number one choice. Good things come to those who wait. The RIT men's hockey team learned this after a long and complicated recruiting process to get goaltender Shane Matalora. I sort of just ended up here. Um, I was playing my last year of juniors in Omaha and there was other schools talking to me and then they found out that I was going to be ineligible. The NCAA was trying to match my transcripts and they were missing a credit so I had to sit out a year and the schools I was talking to couldn't wait the year. And so uh, once Coach Wilson found out and um, RIT found out, then they, they called me and said, we're willing to wait the one year and, and they would love to have me. At that particular time, we didn't need someone to come in to be our number one. So I guess we were in a position that, uh, that we had some flexibility and, and that we weren't looking for someone for that next year. It was the year after that we were looking for, and uh, uh, so we took a chance, and uh, obviously it's played out uh, great. It's worked out really well for him, and uh, obviously for us as a program. Although Matalora has earned the top spot, he had to work hard and battle through an injury to get there. So you weren't always RIT starting goaltender. You had to split minutes in the beginning of this year. What was that like? It was tough. It was definitely uh, we're all competitive guys. Me and Yanni and uh, Josh are all competitive guys. We want to play, and um, you know we just had to go do um, do what we could with our opportunities and, and make best with what we have. And uh, you know that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to go out and play as best as I could whenever I got my chance to play. And and uh, fortunately I played well. And and Coach Wilson said go with it and keep going and keep playing. Well, we thought coming into the year that he was going to have that, that ability. Uh, he didn't play a lot last year, but when he played, we thought he played very well. Uh, I like to start off every year with giving everyone an opportunity. Uh, Yanni, who's a, a senior with us, and, and Josh, an incoming freshman. So I think it's important to give everyone an opportunity. And I think everyone has to earn their position on the team. And, and uh, Shane uh, had a great training camp. Uh, then he sprained his ankle and got off to a little bit of a slow start, and not necessarily his play, but getting into the net to uh, show us what he has. And, and then once he was in the net, uh, he was just finding ways to win games and playing very well. And, and uh, when we decided to just go with one, that, uh, he was the one that we decided to go with. Matalora's competitive drive and calm composure helped him rise quickly, and training with Jared DeMichael in the offseason certainly didn't hurt. Me and D Mike's actually ended up staying this summer here and, and training together and skating pretty much every day almost together. So just prepared each other for his uh, pro debut and, and my the year coming forward for me too to try to get ready to be the starter this year. Just his uh, personality helped a lot and, and being able to bounce questions off each other back and forth and, and just ideas of what we have about our positioning and, and just uh, things that happen during the game and stuff like that uh, really helped a lot. There's no question that Matt Alora has filled the void left by DeMichael. I knew that it was going to be a big shoes to fill after his performance last year. And uh, everybody was looking for who's going to step up and, and sort of be the guy this year. Well, I think, uh, you know, when Jared left, uh, when you go with someone that's uh, played a lot of minutes for you, and which Jared did, I think it, it gives everyone a sense that the door is open and they have to compete and try and get that. And I think Shane has done that. and, and uh, I don't want to say he surprised us, but he's putting up uh, numbers that are really incredible. And uh, uh, we thought he'd play well, but uh, to play as well as he did, you know, I guess it is a bit of a su surprise just the numbers that he's putting up. The numbers say it all. At 12 0 6, Madalor is still the only undefeated goalie in Division I hockey. I guess it's a big deal. I, I don't really know um, how many goalies have gone undefeated in a season. 
um, knock on wood now that, now that I said that, but uh, I, I guess it would be a pretty big deal if I went, went the whole year without getting a loss in, the, in, that, in that column, the loss column. So, um, yeah, it would be, it'd be a nice thing to have. The Tigers hope that having such a strong presence in that will help secure a top seed for the playoffs and another long postseason run. How will having him as a goalie help you in the playoffs? Well, I just think uh, someone of that caliber, and I think uh, it can be intimidating to other teams as well in that, uh, you know, if they don't score early on them, they, they know they're in for a long night. I think, uh, like I said, his numbers speak for themselves. They're very, uh, uh, the numbers are, are, are tremendous. Uh, so I think we'd like to have him uh, have a couple good saves early in the game, and we'd like to score some goals early in the game. And I think it uh, establishes ourselves, and, and we can be uh, a little bit intimidating that we can't score on this guy, and they're going to score some goals as well. There's five games left, I, I believe, and we just we want to win, get as many points as possible out of those five games, and and then uh, finish the season in first place to get the first round by, and and then the top seed in the playoffs, and then. Uh, go into Blue Cross and hopefully do well at the, the Blue Cross championships and then get back to the regionals and see what we can do from there. Still to come on Sports Zone, this RIT diver makes a major splash plus a first at RIT brings hundreds of young girls to campus. Welcome back to Sports Zone. Now, RIT junior Evan Wemp has been diving competitively since the seventh grade. And as Jeff Blossett reports, Wemp put his fears aside, stuck with the sport, and has since become an accomplished diver here at RIT. Evan Wemp has come a long way since arriving on campus in 2008. Well, when Evan came in as a freshman, um, he, I could tell he had a lot of talent. He had some, some habits that he came in with that were really, really hard to break. And um, some basic stuff that he came over with from gymnastics and, and from other coaches in high school. And uh, we had to work really, really hard to change those habits and uh, to turn those negatives into positives. And he's done a really good job as far as working on those small details and getting them done. How has the staff helped you become a better diver? Cliff has changed me as a diver in a lot of ways. He's changed my approach. He's changed how I think about diving, um, just general preparation for a dive. And Cahill, he, he's a motivator. Now, in his third season at RIT, the time and effort Wendt has put into diving is starting to pay off. He's, he's a really good diver. Um, he is, he has some big shoes to fill with uh, Quinn Donahoe. He's four-time All-American, um, most decorated diver in RIT's history, and he just beat his record. So um, Evan has, has really done a great job. Wentz shattered the three-meter RIT diving mark in January, a record he thought he'd never capture. I actually didn't think I broke the record. I knew I had a good meet, but I missed a couple dives. Um, that I generally hit, so I wasn't really sure. But when I broke the record, it was a record that my coach never thought was going to get broken. Um, it, it surprised me and made me really happy. Well, I never said it was impossible for him or anyone to break it. I, I don't know how he got that, but um, it's definitely a very, very high score. And for him to go 346, um, it's, a, it's a great, great achievement for him to do. Um, but he put, he put together a great meet, and hopefully that's what he's going to need to get into Nationals. Um, he's got a good tape, and so it looks good. Good enough to once again qualify for Nationals, but Wentz's work is far from over. How'd you feel about that when you first heard that news? Um, happy again. I qualified last year. Um, now I just need to get a good tape, because um, qualifying doesn't mean I automatically go. Um, you have to send a tape into the selection committee, and then they have to um, decide whether you're in the top 22 for national diving. Nationals come up in late March. Until then, 
Wentz will keep pushing forward towards states and a few more records. Where does most of your competition from? Do you, get, do you push yourself the most, or does it come from your teammates, or does it come from your opponents that you face? I push myself a lot. Um, I get real frustrated when I don't do well. And the, the competition helps when I have someone on the other team who's up there and diving well. It helps me dive better, and my team pushes me a lot. Um, well, he is always the first to practice. Um, always the first one done with practice, getting through all the stuff he needs to do, and then puts in the extra effort at the end. He's a tremendously hard worker. He's got a lot of natural talent, and um, his impact on the team has been tremendous. He's, uh, he's a good leader. He, um, he's always at practice working hard, does his job, and, and uh, it's really, really coming around as far as competition goes now. So he's, he's really learned how to compete this year, which has been great. RIT student athletes take pride in giving back to the Rochester community each year. Earlier this month, the Student Athletic Advisory Committee teamed up with the Center for Women and Gender to host a first here at RIT. Sports own Sammy Falgiani has more. Over 200 Rochester City School girls were welcomed to RIT for the first National Girls and Women in Sports Day. How does it feel to be able to put this together? Um, it feels great to see it come to fruition because for a while it's just been a dream and um, I just feel really fortunate to work in a department that really embraced the idea and so many people on campus and in the community supported it and uh, helped us raise the funds toward it. So I just feels really good. Really feel really fortunate. <laughs> the young girls were paired with RIT student mentors while on campus. How does it feel to impact these girls' lives? Um, to impact these girls' lives is actually really awesome. Just to know that we're going to be a positive role models and hopefully not only will they come back to future events here at RIT, but just have them see what we've been able to accomplish and that know that we were once in their shoes um, coming to upperclassmen and college sporting events and just to be able to let them know that there is a future and that they can really go somewhere with their life if they put their mind to it. I think it's important to get them thinking about college and sports at an early age hopefully they'll start playing in high school like they're all in seventh and eighth grade right now and going into high school maybe they can pick up a sport I think a big thing and who I am today is the experience I've gained through mentorships. I'm hoping that these girls can form a connection that will last past today with their mentors um, but I just think these girls will remember this night forever. Most of the young girls came to see one thing a women's basketball game. What do you think will be the most fun part? Uh, Watching them play. I want to see them beat Nathers, and I and this is my first time ever be going to a basketball game. The girls cheered loudly all night, and in the end, they got their wish, an RIT victory. Did you notice a different energy with the girls here? Oh yeah, absolutely. We knew that they were going to be coming for the last couple of weeks and it's always good to have that energy in the stands and uh, we went and visited uh, the kids in their classrooms earlier this week so it was really cool. We wanted to play hard for them, you know, elementary kids, we want to set goals and, and be ro role models for them and give them something to look forward to when they came. Do you think they helped you make the good comeback at the end of the game? I think so. They were cheering loud. We don't have that many fans usually, so the fans, you know, we really wanted to impress them and they're young kids, so yeah, definitely. Why do athletes make such good role models? Usually we have a good head on our shoulders. We work hard in school. We're students first, then we're athletes. And we come here every day and practice and work hard. And we do what we need to do on the court and off the court, too. So that's what makes us good role models. The game was part of a day intended to leave a lasting impression on these young girls. What does it mean to give these girls an opportunity to see college and sports that they might not otherwise have? Girls will have the experience to come to a college campus and talk with girls enrolled in college and maybe college isn't something that was on their radar before tonight and they'll get excited um, to see all that these girls are doing.
Not everyone enjoys Rochester's harsh winter, but RIT's Freeze Fest was designed to hopefully change that thinking. SC's Olivia Androsa embraced the elements as students took their skills to the extreme on the slopes at the annual rail jam. As RIT's Freeze Fest kicks off, many skiers and snowboarders came out to show off their stuff. RIT's Rail Jam is a competitive event where the riders try to get their best moves and tricks in in order to impress the crowd. So what is Rail Jam? Uh, Rail Jam is an event that we host annually for Freeze Fest and um, it's the second year for Freeze Fest and we have snowboarders and skiers and the snowboarding club and they set up the ramps over here um, and then they judge like tricks and grinds and all these different snowboarding and skiing skills. So what are you doing promoting Rail Jam? Um, well first it starts out with a Facebook group and kind of goes that way and then people have come. Word of mouth is uh, probably the biggest way we promote for the club. Do you get to compete personally? Yes, I do get to ride as, as well as uh, announce everything so it's kind of hectic today but it's good. We hung up flyers, banners, we co-sponsored with the snowboarding club. Um, we're giving away prize packages. We got Red Bull here, we got vitamin water here, and then we have like all this Freeze Fest gear that we're giving out, so it's pretty cool. How did you hear about Rail Jam? I actually got a invitation over Facebook, so saw that, and I've been to this event previously, so I know it's a good time, and it's always a good turnout, so I figured I'd come down, give them support. So how many Rail Jams have you been to? This is my second time going to Rail Jam. Um, I really like it because you get to see all these uh, all these um, students doing tricks out the half pipe. You never see this every day on campus. And what is your favorite thing about Rail Jam? Um, I think the atmosphere is really cool uh, with the Red Bull tent, and all the like the music and stuff. Um, also, some guy just did a flip and completely wiped out, which is pretty awesome. But uh, yeah. It's just a cool event. The best thing about it is basically when I, like some of my really good friends try to do some 360s and like crazy tricks around and I'm like, how do you do that? How do you do that? Um, it's just really exciting. I just love being in the atmosphere of snowboarding. I actually snowboard myself, so it'd be sweet to enter it one day. I really like the competitive atmosphere. Just, you know, everyone just trying to get tricks and everyone like encouraging each other so it's always just a good time. And what's your best trick? Um, probably a rodeo 900 or just backside cork 900. And what is that? That is where you go off a jump and go upside down and do a 900 degree rotation. So you're a judge. What exactly are you looking for in the competitors? We're looking for style and everything. We give out a lot of we give a lot of give out a lot of different awards. Some for the best tricks, some for the best falls. Looking for a consistency and just basically the overall style. And how many awards do you give out? Um, I think there are first, second, third place, and then uh, then there's a, an award for the best fall. And what kind of prizes come with today's winners? Um, this year we got a bunch of stuff. We got some, uh, I think we got some hats, goggles, scarves, uh, a couple other bandanas and stuff like that. There's, uh, I think there's headphones, like normal and everyday snowboarding stuff. What exactly are you trying to win today? Uh, I think it's a bunch of cases of Red Bull and vitamin water. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So what do you think put you apart from the other contestants to win a place? Uh, just trying different things and just trying it the whole time. And what is your favorite thing about Real Jam? Uh, just getting everybody else from campus involved and just showing them what we do. So is there a lot of off-campus activity involved in here too? Oh yeah, all of our events are all off-campus, so this is the really the only chance we get to show people what we do as a club. The Tau Kappa Epsilon Fraternity is bringing fun into a good cause today at RIT, sponsoring the first annual dodgeball tournament in an attempt to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Could you please give us a little bit of background to this event? Well, basically, we've been planning this for a few months. Uh, this is on uh, St. Jude is our uh, national for, uh, philanthropy, which means every single Teak chapter usually does something at least once a year for this. So this is actually uh, another an idea I picked up from another Teak chapter when I went to a leadership conference. So basically, um, uh, they gave the idea, and then I came and like that'll work here. I mean, public safety, RPD, uh, the sheriff's office. You know, I emailed them all out, 
and uh, we have a bunch of great turnout, and uh, we're here to play some dodgeball against some cops. For those that don't know about St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, it was founded in 1962 by Danny Thomas. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, no child is denied treatment for their family's inability to pay. You know, 90% of the time or 80% of the time, the, the best way to treat the child is coming from St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And 84 cents of every dollar that is raised goes directly to the kids of St. Jude. So it's really an unbelievable organization. You know where your money's going to. It's really helping these kids. Who is participating outside of the RIT campus? Uh, we have, uh, let's see, we have a couple jail teams from Monterey County Jail. Uh, we have the Sheriff's Office as a Civil Bureau. Um, and we have uh, Graynet, which is a uh, different uh, Rochester downtown police. Now, how did you first hear about this event? Actually, someone from the Teeks uh, contacted our union. Then our union sent an uh, email out to all the individuals in the police department, and we, we got a team together. It's for a great cause, St. Jude's, I mean, great hospital. Um, get out here, mingle with some college folks. Just, uh, you know, good community policing. Now, if other organizations here at RIT decide to put on events like this, would you be just as willing to uh, participate? Absolutely. We're always up for you know, a game of something. Basketball, dodgeball, you name it, we're here. What's your main goal for today's event? Uh, just try and raise as much money and awareness uh, for St. Jude as possible and, of course, have some fun. Now, how do you feel about Tau Kappa Epsilon hosting an event like this here at RIT? Oh, oh my God. This is what it's all about. Tau Kappa Epsilon is a, part, is a national partner of ours. Um, and to have this chapter here at RIT put together an event like this, it's unbelievable. Um, they've been working so hard. And I really hope it inspires maybe some other chapters, other fraternities, sororities on campus or groups on campus to maybe put something like this together in the future. So it's unbelievable. We're very, very lucky to have the support of Tau Cap Epsilon at RIT. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget for the latest episodes and more, we're always on at RITSZ.com. And you can also stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and friending us on Facebook. So until next time, thanks for joining us here in the zone.